a new Morgan has officially arrived to Forza Horizon 5. And it can be yours for only 20 points in Winter of Dry Season, not to be confused with the Winter of Dry Season, the Winter of Dry Season, or the Winter of Dry Season. Yeah, it's confusing, I know. So, the Morgan Aero GT from 2018 has got itself 362 brake horsepower, 361 foot-pounds of torque while weighing 2,692 pounds with a 4.8 litre engine. There's been quite a fair few versions of the Morgan Aero, but I believe this one was also in Forza Horizon 4 as a part of the car pass. Going to the inside, it does look pretty cool indeed. We've got a few dials and stuff over here, and a few sort of buttons on the centre console. Instead of it being like fully dashboard or steering wheel, it's just on the centre console for some reason. And now let's go ahead and take a listen to that 4.8 litre engine. So here we are now over at the upgrade shop, the first thing we're going to do is go and jump straight to engine swaps and see what we've got. We've got ourselves a 6.2 litre V8, a 5.2 litre V10, the racing 3 litre 2J, we've got the racing V12 as well as a 7.7 .7 litre V12 as well. So all in all a lot of engines and you can also go ahead and twin turbo or supercharge this thing. Going to aero in appearance we've got just Forza aero for the front and for the back I'm guessing... Which wing is it? Oh, why is it that wing? Why? It, it makes it look like an oversized go-kart. In fact, actually, give me a second. Where is? It's over here. We'll go over to roll cage. <laughs> we should see. Hopefully, yeah. We've got ourselves the Morgan Aero go-kart. A fun fact, this thing also starts out on semi-slick tyres, so the only upgrade we can really do is taking them out to full slick race tyres. But we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to go ahead and make the tyres wider at the front and definitely wider at the back up to 295s, which is pretty cool. And then we're going to go ahead and make this thing an A-Class race build. So here we are now at the top of A-Class and we are at 2,710 pounds and 371 brake horsepower with only 11,200 credits spent. So here we are now over at the paint shop, we're going to jump over to Advanced, there's nothing there like normal, but going to manufacture paint colours, we have got ourselves a whopping one. Yes, I know, very creative. Now if I had a look up online, and I think as far as I can tell, this specific car in-game is modelled after the Morgan Aero 8 Series 5. I'm not too sure on that one, so somebody in the comments, or anybody from Morgan if they happen to watch the video, go ahead and let me know, because I am honestly genuinely intrigued. But now we're going to go ahead and jump into one of the new racetracks, the Linear Costera Sprint. I know I butcher that name every single time, but we're going to go ahead and see just what this aero can do. And away we go! Now, ironically, the Morgan Aero does not have any aero, but it does have a cool looking uh, sort of body kit to it. But let's go ahead and see what we can do. 370 something brake horsepower, 11 other cars, and we want to come out on top. Out of the first sort of corner off the edge of the roundabout, this thing is handling extremely well. I'm honestly really quite impressed. Although this thing is on race suspension from stock, so I guess that would make sense as well, and semi slicks, so. I guess that's all the handling right there, past everybody going straight through the middle of two cars right here, and we've only got one more ahead of us to try and get past, but it is a BMW, so uh, this could be a little tricky. Or not, I guess there goes the BMW. I'm surprised, honestly, at how quick that got us to first place. We've kind of got past everybody a little quicker than I thought, so now I'm a bit stumped for words, really. Although I guess that does feature this thing pretty well in just how good it is at driving, if it's managed to uh, beat everybody and also me to figuring out what words are. Seems to handle turning okay, it's a little understeery in places and also a little oversteery in places, so it's kind of just on the verge of both, but it all does also depend on how you drive this thing. And knowing me and my driving style, I usually spend time throwing cars sideways rather than being in an actual race. As for the gears, they do feel pretty good from stock. Obviously I can't throw a gearbox thing because that would take this thing straight over into S1, which is kind of what we were trying to avoid to start with. But, you know what, I think this thing could honestly be a pretty decent car in line. I'm not going to say it will be the fastest in A-Class, but it will definitely be a pretty decent contender. Although I know there's always going to be that one person that takes this car and just makes it do absolutely insane stuff that it was never designed to do. Because, of course, Forza players are kind of just really all over the place. You get some great, some terrible, and some that do crazy things. And us, well, we've just finished the race in first place with a time of 2 minutes 47. So here we are now back over at the upgrade shop, the first thing we're doing is going to conversion and making this thing all wheel drive because we are going of course for a little bit of drag racing and I kind of really want to use the racing 2 litre, or racing 3 litre sorry, but I also really want to use the 7.7 litre V12 so I think we're going to do that. And yes, twin turbos are a must. 
on with the off-road suspension, and now let's go ahead and see what else do we need. Most likely a gearbox, because knowing me, I completely forget that stuff. So we're going to go ahead and throw in a 7-speed. So 107,200 credits later, we are now sat at just under 2,500 pounds with 1,307 brake horsepower. Oh dear, what could possibly go wrong? And now I have to sit down and tune an entire gearbox. Yay! Okay, here we are now over at the festival. Let's go ahead and get a wheelie check. Do we get anything? Nope. But this thing, I've got the feeling, is going to be very, very speedy indeed. So let's go ahead and get ourselves lined up over on this side of the drag strip here. And I think this might end up being a second gear launch. So let's go ahead and get ourselves ready. And away we go. This thing is, honestly, it's light. It's fast. I'm hoping it's going to be good. Let's go ahead and see. Are we going to be right? Do we get at least 200 through the camera? I hope so. And we do. 213.52. And off the end of the runway, we've got 235, which is not too bad at all. And even better news is I have a coffee and biscuits to go with it. So here we are now back over at the upgrade shop, and we're going to jump back up to our good old fan favourite just a stock tire compound. That feels weird to say. Usually I'm going back up to like semi slicks or over to this or over to that. But now we're going straight back to stock. That feels so weird. Anyway, back to also stock suspension, which is race suspension to you and I. And then we're going to go ahead and take this thing for a bit of a good old top speed run. But before we do that, here is this week's Forzathon shop. We've got ourselves the Aston Martin Valhalla concept car, the Happy Snowman head, the Snowman outfit, the BAC mono, the Deck the Halls car horn, which sounds a bit like this. We've got the Horizon Super Wheel Spin and the Horizon Regular Wheel Spin as well. Right, out to the motorway we go. Okay, here we are now over at the edge of the motorway, so let's go ahead and get ourselves ready, and away we go. Let's go ahead and see what we get out of the Morgan Aero GT. Also, this thing hits boost so quickly, I can literally hear the turbo whistling over the exhaust, or over the engine noise, I should say, which is actually, it's kind of cool, I'm not going to lie, I like that. And out of the speed zone we go at 268.24, and I had to just keep my eye on the road for a second, otherwise I was going to fall off that bridge, but now we've got the downhill and speed camera still to go, so let's go ahead and find out how quick we are down both of those. Speaking of, up here is, there it is, the speed camera, 272.09, a lot of traffic, and going downhill, 274, do we get 275? Nope, just 274, which is actually kind of nuts, considering this thing is... Well, what it is, really. I don't really have any words. But it's Honestly, it's cool. I like it. And the other cool thing is British. I already know there's going to be somebody in the comments that goes, actually, it's owned by this company. It's in a different country. But just just let me have this one, okay? All right, here we are up to the edge of the drift zone. Sideways, let's go ahead and throw this thing in here and see what we get. So far, it's actually proven to be a pretty good indeed. Completely sideways and 41,837 points on the first run, which is not bad at all. In fact, that's probably better than some of the other first runs that we've had in a lot of the previous cars just from this year. But now let's go ahead and see, can it do the same thing the other way? We're going back for round two, we're throwing this back towards the other direction, and let's see what we do. We ah, I still end up climbing the bridge. Oh well. Out the other side at 38,413 points, which is, again, still pretty good indeed. But that is this video on the Morgan Aero GT. It is definitely worth picking up and just to, you know, just even for driving around or apparently sending to space like I did back there. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's worth it. It's worth it. 20 points, about an hour of your time. And yeah, go ahead and get yourself one of these, even if it just sits around as a little bit of a collector's item after you've tried it for like two days. But uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. This thing will not get back on the road. <laughs> thank you for watching. Take out. See ya. Oh, the end of that video was a mess.